Hey no man sculptors, welcome back to my channel. It's been a little while since I uploaded a video like this because of personal reasons, but I'm happy to be back and I want to share with you again another walkthrough of how I made what my wife dubbed Herbie the Happy Hermit using Nomad Sculpt. The first thing I do these days when making my 3D models is that I do a lot of research and gather references. I like using pure ref and in some cases with original pieces I like to also sketch a 2D idea just to kind of get myself in the headspace that I need to start creating this character. If you're someone who don't know what pure ref is, I'll link it in the description below. It is totally free but is so useful for a lot of designers and artists. I sketch using Procreate and I love working as much as possible on my iPad because I really enjoy the experience of sculpting and drawing on it. Once I'm done with the sketching and the research phase, then I finally move into sculpting. I start by blocking out the primary shapes of the model. I'm not concerned with any detail at this point. I'm just trying to work out the silhouette and to just get all the big shapes in the right place first. This saves you so much time in the future. In this video, you'll see me run into a roadblock where I had to make a big change, but because I was following the process of just focusing on the primary shapes first, it wasn't too hard to make those changes before I started working on the final details. You'll also notice in this early stage that I use the tube tool quite a lot. It is such a useful tool to me, especially when I'm doing organic shapes. It allows me to quickly find my form, scale it, and then just apply it. It's wonderful. Also, you will notice that I'm working at a very low resolution. It's a good idea to keep your model as low a resolution as possible in the early phases because you don't really need that much vertices at the beginning of the process. At this stage, I'm just bouncing between the move brush as well as a tube tool and just adding primitive shapes and putting them in position just to start blocking out as mentioned before. Then when it came time to add in the claws, I started doing a little bit more modeling. And during this stage, you'll notice too that I kept the grid on so that I could place things correctly so it would appear that he's standing on level grown in this instance. As you can see in this turnaround, I kept him as low poly as possible so that he could be easy to work with at this stage and really just get the big shapes down. This is your opportunity to be able to solve big problems at the beginning before moving on to all the wonderful details. Once I was happy with that, I just started focusing on sculpting his face a little bit and just starting to get his look down. Those of you who are new to my channel may be wondering why I'm not talking more specifically about some of the details and using the tools. Well, this video is mainly just a walkthrough to explain some of the big concepts that comes with sculpting in Nomad Sculpt. But for you, if you're new, you can see my YouTube shorts as well. There I explain in a minute or less some of the features of Nomad and how to make use of some of the basic tools in it. So after this video, feel free to check out my first videos. I'm striving to post one each week. That's what I can manage for now. And I hope that they're helpful to new ones. So at this point in the sculpt, I'm starting to bleed over into the secondary shapes. In my mind, this is still the primary stage, but that's how it is. There's not a definitive overlap exactly where you go from primary to secondary, but you can see how effective it is to start with just the basics and then continue to get more and more complex as you solve smaller and smaller problems.
for the spikes on the shell you can see I'm using the drag tool if you slow down the video you'll be able to see it if you're not familiar with it but that was a quick way to start getting those shapes then once I was done blocking out the big shapes on the shell I did a little turn around and you can see all the different shapes that I started getting in place it seemed like I would be done here but I ran into an issue looking at just the overall anatomy I didn't pay attention to my references so I had to pay the price as a result so I had to go back as you'll see later on and make some big changes but first I continued to add some of the secondary shapes to the claws and other little features around his body you'll notice too while I was sculpting the claw I ran into a little issue with the original sphere that became the claw the vertices at the very top or at one end of the sphere you would see at the pole started to pinch and I couldn't just sculpt around it so there was a simple fix I had to just simply go and voxel remesh it and once I did that it was solved and I could continue sculpting so you can look out for that too if you are having strange pinches it's good to turn on the wireframe to see if there's a lot of vertices bunching up in one spot and again this works well when you are at low polys once I was happy with the big features I couldn't resist anymore I had to fix the big issue when it came to his anatomy and I had to start moving things around making sure that nothing was clipping so that everything would be exactly the way it needs to be and by this point you can see I'm starting to move toward the tertiary shapes the finer details where we get to really sculpt and have some fun and now this is where it's okay where you can start to add more and more vertices so that you can add more and more detail to your sculpts subdivided I started using the stamp tool to test some alphas that I made using some brushes I have in procreate as you can see in the pop-up in procreate I created one file that had multiple layers with different textures that allowed me to combine them in different combinations and just see what would come up and I had some fun and I found a few interesting things but it's maybe a nice little tip to keep in mind when you're making your own alphas as a way to work non-destructively, I applied my textures on a separate layer so that I could have my base and if I changed my mind, I had the flexibility to go back quickly and update it. The layers also allow you to apply the intensity to which these textures are applied. Also working with the layers allows you to iterate making different versions of the textures that you're using so it's very easy to go back and forth and then decide later on exactly what you would like. Once I was done testing out the textures on the claw, I started applying the same strategy to the rest of the body. And the shell itself wasn't very different. I just selected a different type of alpha and started applying those textures there as well. Here in this turnaround, you can see I'm done with all my sculpting and all my textures are in place. And now I'm ready for painting. You can see the advantage of approaching your sculpts with this kind of step-by-step -step process it really saves you a ton of time and it makes things less frustrating as you work 
For painting, I also worked on layers. I had the base colors in their own layers, and then each additional color was on a separate layer. While painting, I used depth filtering a lot so that I could get the textures to look really nice. Depth filtering for your paint tool is essentially allowing you to paint either in the valleys or on the hilltops of those nice textures that you have. That's the simplest way I could put it. Maybe in another video I'll demonstrate it more. Or if you haven't done so, why not subscribe and check back to see if I post it as a YouTube Shorts video. For this model, I thought of myself as working with an airbrush and I kind of applied layer after layer as best as I could and then I did a little bit of smudging just to blend in some of the hard edges that I didn't want in certain locations. And that's basically what I do using three or four different colors I think and that allowed me to get the kind of look that I was going for for this model. I also experimented with the roughness and metalness of the paint as I was airbrushing it on so that I could get the kind of effect that I want of that shell. I also used for the big shell similar approach but I had to be careful not to change the roughness and metalness as I applied different colors to the shell to give it that nice depth that I was looking for. As you can see here, I started adding some lights just before finishing all my painting work. I just wanted to see what it would look like and started adding the floor and uh, some reflections and things like that just to start to move towards the final image. Once all the painting was done, then I made a new file, perfect duplicate of the working file. And what I did, I had to merge all my layers because I wanted to export it to Blender. If you're interested to see how it is that you export to Blender, you can check out my Mega Man video part two. The link is in the description so you can get an idea of how to work with the nodes and to make sure that everything's ready so you have all your information that you work so hard on in Nomad over in Blender as well. Here's what the model looked like using EV in Blender. You can see all my colors came in as well as the lights that I set up in Nomad. Then without turning this into a Blender tutorial, I made some final adjustments and set the stage for a render using cycles. And just before I show you the final render, here's what it looks like finished in Nomad Sculpt. I really liked how it turned out and I learned a whole lot and I was reminded of certain things I need to do to stay on top of my sculpts as I work. And here is the final render in Blender. I hope you enjoyed watching and I hope that you picked up something that you can use in your process of making 3D art. At the very least, I hope that I also inspired you to continue to create 3D artwork. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.